wonderful couple days in St. George, Utah and over in Zion National Park. We left our newfound friends Will and Luann and we headed toward Bryce Canyon. This was a kind of a meandering journey taking us from I-15 north to Utah 20 east then down to 89 which is a very scenic drive but we couldn't take that from the other side of Zion because of the Zion Mount Carmel Tunnel height restriction so we had to go the other way. And then to Utah 12 and then Utah 63 to the park. One of the things that was interesting is you notice that the uh, landscape looks like the uh, Thunder Mountain Railroad from Disney. We wonder if the Imagineers got that idea from driving this drive because it's such a similar landscape as what they have. If you've ever been to Disney World or Disneyland, you'll see that that ride looks a lot like this roadway. buzzer sound sounds, that usually means my Freightliner engine, or my Caterpillar engine in my motorhome is overheating and usually we're going up a steep hill. And wouldn't you know it, right after that we end up running into two tunnels that are two inches shy of our roof. So we have to take, take the center of the, uh, the lane and hopefully there was nobody coming the other direction. I was just keeping an eye on it and nobody was coming so I said I'm taking the whole road and going right through that tunnel. So. Yep, all the fun things when you're, when you're RVing. Uh, you should always get your, yourself weighed and uh, also measured for heights. And if you're going to go into Canada, you should really do it in both metric and in, uh, in English. So it's a good idea to have both the U.S. and Canada, and Mexico for that matter. At the roundabout, take the first exit on State Route 63. Welcome to Bryce Canyon Country. After this roundabout, we head toward uh, Bryce Canyon City, and there's a place called Ruby's Inn there. And in 1916, Reuben Syred is, is his name, and they nicknamed him Ruby. He settled his family there. Well, in 1919, he got word that there was going to be a national uh, monument there called Bryce Canyon National Monument. And that didn't get formalized until 1923. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's how Ruby's Inn got started. Hello there. How are you? We're going to try. Uh, is it north would be better for us, do you think? <laughs> Okay. Great. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Got to read the vehicle restriction. A lot of people coming out of here. Look at all those white cars in the road. This must all be parked Rentals. vehicles. In 900 feet, turn right on North Campground Road. Government vehicles are all white. All right, campground. Okay, let's it's easier to go this way. Seriously. Turn right on North Campground Road. A loop is straight. B loop is. This is B loop. Do you want to try and go this one first or what? I would try A. 
A loop? Where is that? Straight ahead? It says it's up to the A loop. A loop is that way. Oh, so you a loop, RBM loop. Well, I'm sure you go A? Yeah, try A. Okay. Okay, the table's set up and so it's taking it. That's a nice sight right there. Okay. This video is really deceiving because it makes it look like we just drove right into campsite and found one right away. But what we really had to do is drive around every loop that we could until we found an open site and took this one. And this one, the picture doesn't show it, but it's really off level and we had to put 16 blocks under all the tires four duels plus a bunch of blocks under the leveling jacks because the brakes are actually on the rear tires and they must be on the ground you should never ever have your tires up in the air with just the jack suspending them so yeah it was interesting but we finally got in and got the site here at bryce canyon national park and we got campsite number one it's like one of the last campsites here only problem is I had to use like 32 sets of blocks <laughs> as I try to show you my wheels. This coach is really, really jacked up. There's like 64 blocks under there, under all of them. But yeah, it's a beautiful sight though, but we've had some rain, some uh, thunderstorms in the, in the distance. You can see that, but it is sunny out, so. Bryce Canyon National Park is beautiful. We're going to hope to go our electric bikes out and ride through the park if the weather holds up. All right, today is the 16th of May, Tuesday, and we're in Bryce Canyon National Park, as you can tell by the beautiful scenery behind. And Sue and I are about ready to go to the Mossy Cave area, part of the park, which is about three and a half miles east of the Ruby's Inn and the main junction of the road to go into the park. So we're staying in the north campground right now. It's been kind of rainy and thunderstorming the last day and a half, or half a day, I should say. Part of yesterday and all this morning. But now it's beautiful out. It's blue sky. So we're going to take our chance on this one-mile hike, or just under a one-mile hike round trip. So it should be good. We had to park in the overflow area because this is a real popular hike. It's an easy hike, so there's not much parking <laughs> for all the old fogies that need to take the easy hikes. Pinion Juniper Life Zone. It's a pretty little bird. Chipmunks. Ooh, a lizard. Uh oh. <laughs> you didn't see that. It's a pretty looking lizard, too. I don't want to see it in real life. I know. Maybe from a distance. Well, this is cool. People are coming back. It's a very short in and out, 0.4 miles in. So. Just the landscape in which you're hiking is amazing. Just, this isn't even the main part of Bryce Canyon. <laughs> this is, yes, hon? Does that look like the Cars ride? Yeah, I think Disney used this for their Cars ride in, for their, in California Adventure, in California Adventure definitely. So, now there's water flowing down there, so we know we got a waterfall coming. Onward and upward. All right, look at this river running. And people on the bridge out there taking photos. You should hike in front of me. What's that? I should hike in front of you? <coughs> okay. Oh, the lizard scarer. All right. All right, up we go. More hiking to go. This is beautiful today. You'd never know it was overcast and pouring out this morning or sprinkling this morning. And 40 degrees. <laughs> it's like 75 right now, I think. Not quite. Well, maybe. In the sun, it might be. Water is definitely flowing here. So we've got water joining this river in a couple different ways, under the main waterway here and then coming down that canyon right there. That's pretty cool and adding to it. We were just saying we want to be here in a flash flood. Look at 
the amount of debris that could be carried down here. We're going up some switchbacks. We go, but first we thought we'd be underdressed, wearing uh, long arms, long sleeve arm shirts and long pants. Oh, I guess we're, oh wow, look at that waterfall over there. I guess we're prepared for sun's pr protection from the sun. <laughs> yeah, it, it is supposed to rain today. That's the thing about Bryce Canyon, afternoon thunderstorms. I'm looking for a sign. Show me a sign, Lord, show me a sign. <sighs> that is cool over there, though. Very cool. Well, we went down to one side of the trail. And there's a nice uh, water rushing really fast right behind us. And this comes over the waterfall, which is in front of us. I'll turn around, you can see that. Susie's over there with another hiker. Let's see if I can get to a better spot. She's taking a shade break right now, but that's, that's it over there. So yeah, this is pretty cool. It turned out to be a real nice day. Well, this is the last of the hill. And this river we found out is called the Severe River, just like Tennessee. So maybe it's connected to the same person. I have no idea. But it's not S-E-V-E-R-E. -E -E, it's S-E-V-I-E-R, I believe. So. And we're heading back down to the car. And go pick up our puppy dog and go to a place where he can go on the trail up by uh, Sunset Point, I think it is. Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. Sunset to Sunrise. Okay. And there's a stretch of trail that they allow pets on with leashes, so. Because Yeah. The bike trails in this park are just amazing. I mean, there's like 20 miles of bike trails. And, uh, and they actually help you get around. We haven't got our e-bikes out at this place, but we did at Zion, so. Anyways, what a wonderful hike. Love Bryce Canyon. Look up there. That's the view. Yeah, it is. I see it right behind this tree. There's a hole, and this is just one snapshot. The, the amphitheater section of the park. It's appropriately named amphitheater because you're seeing all around you. Sunset Point at Bryce Canyon and mom is running way ahead of dude and I, wanna, I wanna catch up to her I wanna catch up to her yeah there's a debate about whether pets are allowed but I can see there's a pet bag right there so they are allowed here on the on the paved trail you just can't take them down in the canyon so we haven't been here in several years <laughs> hey yippee Yippee Skippy, come on. Little Doodle likes to make some barky boys. No. No chasing any chipmunks through the... We don't want to lose you through the things either. Oh man. 
comes that way. Look at this. Oh my God, it is gorgeous. This is Bryce, Bryce Canyon at its best. <laughs> nope, nope. Sue, pick him up. Yeah, somebody's gonna have to go and time out. <laughs> what do you think you're doing, barking? You're mecking it, messing up my video. <laughs> so we are at Sunset Point. Yeah, this is uh, amazing. Those are those are called hoodoos, the things that are sticking up down there. And it's kind of kind of overcast, but it was it was clear today. Uh, so let's go take a walk. Oh. Be careful where you're walking. No guardrails here. I see the view, it is beautiful. And you're going straight down. Life insurance paid up. <laughs> it is. Back up, back up. <laughs> Wise guy, eh? <laughs> Say hey, dude. Say hi. Say hi. Yeah, this is beautiful. I hate that we only have a couple days here, but we do. You could do so much in this park. You could probably stay a whole month, and there's so many things to do. They have night hikes down into the hoodoos uh, on a full moon night with no lights. We've done that. And we've done that in years past. But again, this is beautiful, beautiful scenery. He just walks right by your side. Just be careful not to step on him. Maybe. Would that be better? Could what, be. What can you see behind me? Hoodoos. Oh, you can see them? Yeah. You can sit here and watch the colors change against this red rock. And it's amazing. Just look at this beauty. It's a literally a painting. You see people hiking down there? Not at the moment, but I'm sure they do. I don't even see the trails. Oh yeah, there's some trails over there. Quiet too. Except for the occasional bark. It's not, it's used to people now. If you've ever seen that iconic postcard of Bryce Canyon in that hoodoo sticking up, it's Thor's hammer, obviously appropriately named. Well, we got a photo of it. It's down in the amphitheater. It's a beautiful sight. You gotta come to Bryce Canyon and check it out. All right, we are at Rainbow Point, which is the end of the road. 18 or so miles up the road from the visitor center, roughly. Still got snow on the ground here. It's about 43 degrees outside, my guess. We're pretty high up in the mountains. This is Bryce Canyon National Park, the end of State Route 63 at the end of the scenic road. You still won't even have the snow cleared from here. I bet this is just absolutely gorgeous. Depends the time of day it is, but here we are. Looking in the amphitheater. There's snow down there. Snow over there. Pretty amazing. The 
changing landscape just all over the place. And you go further over here, you can see way out there, the Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument is out here too. Well, look at this. Area closed, dangerous cliffs, I'll say so. And a lot of snow. Is that wind you're hearing, honey? Or, or is it water? Oh, it's wind, I gotta take my hat off. Dangerous cliffs. Wow. You can definitely hear the, oh, there's the road over there, the car coming up it. From whence we came, over there. I'd like to know where the area is that we left. And the other part of the park is over across the canyon. Wow, this is beautiful. Yeah, there's many amphitheaters here to see. It's pretty amazing. I never knew this was so high up in Utah, 9,100 feet. I thought only high elevations were in Colorado and things like that. So we are high up here and it is chilly. The car's heated seats are gonna feel good when we get back in there. Man, just look at the beauty. So glad they preserved this. Little doodle. Okay, say bye bye. Bye bye. Say bye bye, dude. Bye, dude. Well, this is North Campground at Bryce Canyon National Park. Beautiful campground. National Park. And this is the first time I've seen this. They've actually got signs up now. 25 foot RV or greater only, which is really nice and helpful for big rigs. Um, we came in here the other day. We got here at like 12 o'clock. It's first come, first serve. May 19th, everybody has to leave and they go on a reservation system. So we got here, we were in the first come, first serve time. And uh, we, we were wondering why all these little small camper vans, now this is a class C there, but a lot of little small camper vans like those over the rental ones over there were parked in these spots, huge massive spots. And there's a little tiny rig in there. Well, because the tent loop, there's two other tent loops that are here, they're closed. So people had no choice. So they would take whatever they could find. So I guess now that they're preparing to open up the other loops, the dump station opened yesterday for the first time for the season. Over at, uh, at the general store here in Bryce Canyon, there's a huge pile of snow still sitting on the ground up by the amphitheater, up by the rim. So, beautiful park though. Um, and with your your uh, America the Beautiful Senior Pass, this was 15 bucks a night for us. $30 a night if you're not a senior, but still $30 a night for a national park. Beautiful. So, a lot, a lot of room now. I mean, there's people have vacated. A bunch of sites open. We're in site number one, so. Pretty good. For the most part, we've been able to use solar all day, but we do crank the generator on for an hour or so in the morning. The other day we had rain in the morning, so it was overcast, like it is kind of partially overcast this morning. So generator hours are from eight to 10 and from six to eight. So we don't want to be too obnoxious with our big diesel generator, but we do need to make sure we're charged. But with our lithium batteries, we're doing fine. I think we're already at, 70% right now and I'm in the full open sun which is awesome so yep